You guys must be wondering, why is that kidab there? Or what on earth is she wearing? While others might have a hunch that she must have gone through some kind of a big dilemma and somehow miraculously overcome it. So she's here today to inspire us with her story. How about now? Better? Do I look more respectable now? Looks like someone worth listening to. Now, if this is the first thing I have learned, you guys might have thought, oh, she surely has done something brilliant. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you, but no, I did not discover a new mathematical equation or a virus of some sort. Oh, well, I wish, but I am simply a student and a youth. A youth with a very small voice to change the world. This line, Kabataan ang pag-asa ng bayan. In English, youth is the hope of our nation. We all know that line. Y'all must have heard it at least once. And if you already did, let me ask you something. Have you had enough of it yet? Because I am sick of hearing that phrase over and over. I used to hear that a lot when I was younger. At school, at home, or even outside, especially from adults. But now that I am knowledgeable enough and probably a bit older at least, that phrase still lives on through generations. They constantly emphasize that I am the hope. Youth is the hope. But they confine us to being something or someone we're actually not. We are underestimated. We are called blunt, disrespectful, social media addicts, or just some depressed kids, rebels, and party animals. Another one, for instance. In the latest Philippine election, youth opinions were invalidated and mocked. Yes, what do we know? We're just kids. And you're adults who have experience in this kind of stuff. Greta Thunberg. When she was 16 years old, she was mocked by people worldwide, including national leaders. Why? Because of her climate change advocacy. You see, youth will voice out and stand up. Yet they will invalidate it. The youngsters will share what they feel. Yet they will be slapped with comments like, when I was at your age or you're just lazy and seeking attention, go to school. You know, that kind of statements. My senior high school class had a small forum to share their experiences about moments like those. Moments when, when they feel like they are stereotyped by adults. Experiences like this. When they're trying to explain their negative emotions, instead of listening, they'll simply regard it as a normal thing. Invalidating emotions because, according to them, their generation never experienced that before. Females and household chores, a classic. Parents are expecting that teenage girls like me should be good at chores. No matter how right you are and how wrong the elderly are, you're not supposed to talk. Stop it, don't talk. Simply because it is disrespectful for them. How bold of them to announce that we are the hope of the future. They wrote in the book that my voice and truth matter. Yet, they put a gun in your face, ready to pull the trigger of mock and belittling. They agreed that we should not fail them, but they're the first to fail you. Youth activism is highly prominent around the globe. Young people have been catalysts for social change, 
organizing rallies and hunger strikes, as well as creating community organizations, political education workshops, for example. When young people engage in this kind of societal issues, their actions are deemed as merely generational rebellion or just a face kind of thing. Can people just view this as meaningful actions and awareness? Awareness of youth to what's actually happening around us. Past research revealed young people feel that their movements are not fully understood or always respected. And instead, it is trivialized and belittled. These points speak directly to adults to stop adultism as a system of oppression, change their everyday behaviors and interactions with young people. Youth wanted to be treated as equals. Imagine big organizations for world peace have been seriously supporting young people in their vision to make the world a better place. But the problem is, it is deeply rooted in the very small daily interactions of adults and youth. Stereotypes and prejudice begin at an early age when we become aware of our gender identity. That's when we are taught about gender roles. We were told as children that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Girls should play with dolls and the boys should play with trucks. They let us adopt these beliefs and forced us to fit in their norms. This keeps on happening for decades. And the question is, until when are we going to keep the stereotypes? Wipe off the prejudice and stereotyping in your eyes. There's more behind their attitudes, behavior, and language than meets the eye. Instead of pulling them down, it is better to listen, learn, educate, and encourage the youth. Let's be united to build a society for every one of us, be it men, women, farmers, doctors, builders, Christians, Muslims, people of color, whoever you are, old or young. Kulash Sutyarthi, a winner of the Nobel Peace Prize laureate said, the power of the youth is the commonwealth of the entire world. No segment in the society can match the power, idealism, enthusiasm, and courage of the young people. Now, I wanted to ask if you remember what I said at the beginning. I am sick of hearing the phrase that youth is the hope of our future. I actually don't mean it. I, I only said that to seek attention. But the point is, that's the thing for young people. We don't give up easily. We are persistent, courageous. We have new and flexible ideas that can inspire people. As a youth who voluntarily wants to bear the weight of being called the hope and future of our society, I want to encourage my fellow youth to do the same thing I did today. Stand up and deliver. And to the adults out there, I wish don't think that I'm just seeking attention. Let the youth be free from this cage of prejudice and stereotype. Let the youth speak up about their morals and let them be themselves if they are to be the hope of our future.